Welcome to this primer on sets. We will continue our discussion from last time. And in this lecture, we'll discuss some basic operations on sets like union and intersection, etc. So let's recall some relevant things. We of course need the notion of sets. We need to know about need to know about what is meant by belongings and quantifiers. So recall uh, if you have a set A, then you can write things like this. This means A, I mean little a is an element of capital A where A is a set and that is a member of the set. And if uh, A is not a member of the set capital A, then we write A not in. We just slash it out and write it that way. Okay? And then we discussed quantifiers. Not that, I don't think we'll need quantifiers here in this lecture, but anyway, let's recall a little bit. So there are two quantifiers. One is the existential quantifier and the other is the universal quantifier. The existential quantifier is merely a shorthand for there exists and cousin phrases. And the universal quantifier is a shorthand for for all. Nothing more complicated than that. Okay. Uh, we talked about this implies sign. This is read as implies. So when you write something like statement A, then you make this symbol and then write statement B. It means that if A is true, then B is true. And then there is this double implies sign, which, which means if and only if. Can be read as if and only if. Or you can also read it as double implies. But what is the meaning? The meaning is the implication goes both ways. So if we write something like statement A, double implies statement B, this is just the same as saying that A implies B and B implies A. Right? So that's that. And then we discussed the notion of subsets. If we have two sets and we write this, it means, I mean, the way she, the way we read it is as A is a subset of B and the meaning is that every element of A is contained, is, is an element of B. And diagrammatically, which is perhaps something I missed talking about, one can express this diagrammatically in this way. We make uh, a blob to denote the set B. Yeah, let's say this blob denotes B and inside that we can make a blob denoting A. So this is a diagrammatic way to represent the fact that A is a subset of B. And we discussed the power set, which I will not recall here because we won't need it. Okay, fine. So let's proceed. Here are some problems for practice. And now let us get started. So the most, uh, most fundamental operation on two sets that you one can perform is the operation of union. Suppose we have two sets, A and B. The union of A and B is defined as, another set is defined as the set whose elements are precisely those elements, precisely those elements which are in A or in B. Or both, of course. So, what are the elements that lie in the union of A and B? The ones which are in A, the ones which are in B. And this is a logical OR. So, we are not saying that the ones which are in A and B both. We are saying the ones which are in A or the ones which are in B. Alright? So, in the set builder form, one can write the union as this set. Those elements which are in A or which are in B, or both. So this is the set builder form, and what is the notation for the union? The notation for the union is, we write the set A, we make a cup, and we make, and we write B. That's the notation. Uh, and diagrammatically, how do we represent? We make a blob for A, we make a blob for B, and uh, let's say, 
we label the diagram then what is well what is the color of this wait a second yeah so what is the union of a a and b in this diagrammatic way it's the shaded part i hope you can see the shading it's this and that combined so the entire shaded part is a union b okay all right and note that uh, i mean it's a very simple observation that a union b is same as b union a and you can extend this uh, notion of union to multiple sets you don't necessarily need to take the union of two sets you can take the union of any arbitrary collection of sets so if we had let's say three sets a b and c you can talk about a union b union c and this is the set of those elements which are in a or in b or in c so fine and let's see just one very simple example so let's say a is equal to this set and b is equal to this set what is a union b it is clearly the first five integers so here some things were repeated this element was repeated so it will definitely feature but others will also feature repetition does not change the set so writing three two times is not going to change anything so we just write three only one time all right so i think that's good enough for the notion of union now let's talk about intersection it's a close cousin of union so again a and b be sets then the intersection of a and b is defined as defined as the set whose elements are precisely those elements which are in both a and b so the common elements of a and b is what constitute are what constitute the intersection so in the set builder form the intersection is written this way x in a and x in b what is the notation the notation is we write a we make an inverse cup and we write b okay and diagrammatically how do we represent make a blob for a make a blob for b and we shade the common part right this this common part is a into section b okay great uh, let's see yeah so we can also note that a into section b is same as b into section a and for a very simple example like in the previous slide you we take a as 1 2 3 b as 3 4 5 a intersection b is the singleton 3 because that is the only common element but a more interesting example is furnished by our high school geometry knowledge so let a b all rhombuses rhombi maybe rhombuses and b is equal to all rectangles then what is a intersection b what is a rhombus a rhombus is a quadrilateral whose all four sides are equal that's the definition of a rhombus and a rectangle is a quadrilateral whose all four angles are 90 degrees so if you intersect uh, all rhombuses with all rectangles what you get is all squares okay so just a test of your geometry knowledge okay set difference this is another very useful operation fix two sets a and b then this the symbol is called the difference or you know many times it is also written 
as a minus b, but I prefer the previous one. So this is a notation. What is this set? It is defined as the set whose elements are, or, or the set of all those elements which are in A but not in B. Right? So in the set builder form, one can write it in this way, all those x's which are in A but not in B. And notation is already here. This is the notation. And here, of course, one can easily see that this will not happen. This is not necessarily true. In general, this is not true. If A is equal to B, then this is true because then both are empty sets. And diagrammatically, one can easily depict the set difference. So the shaded part, which is that part is A minus B. All right, and uh, for the very simple example, take A as one, two, three, B as B four, five, A minus B is one and two, right? Maybe let's also note that A minus A is the empty set always, and A minus the empty set is A. This is always true. So very simple things. And lastly, we have the notion of complements. So A and X be set such that A is a subset of X. Let me indicate that with a diagram also simultaneously. This is X and A is a subset of X. This is A. Maybe I'll write it inside. All right. So the complement of A in X is defined as just this set, X minus A. All the things which are in X but not in A. It's just a fork of the previous definition or a derivative of the previous definition, but it is useful. Diagrammatically, the shaded region, which is the things outside, that is the complement of A in X. And many times we just write it as A prime. So instead of writing this, whoops, what is going on? Instead of writing this, we write a prime, and of course, this is ambiguous. It forgets all about x, but in context, we know what we are talking about. So, if x is a big master set containing all the other sets, then you write a prime, and a is, as, let's say, something here, then a prime is uh, denoting the complement of a in x. So, in context, this is not confusing, but uh, this is the more precise notation. Okay, uh, so let's look at a, re a related theorem. Fix two subsets of a set X, then De Morgan's law says that complement of union is intersection of complements. And this left side can be read like this. The things which are not in any of A and B. These are the things which are in A or in B. These are the things which are not in any of A or B. It's outside both. And the right side can be thought of as, as outside both. So, I mean, it is expressing a very, very clear verbal message in notation and in precise language. Not in any is, of course, outside both, clearly. But that is what is happening here. So, let's first understand this via picture. This is X, this is A, and that is B. Now, what is the left side? The left side is complement of union. Union is this, this, this thing, 
So the complement of union will be the outside thing and it will take me a long time to shade it, but let me do it. Oops. The shading is not perfect. Some of things, some of the things are leaking out and some of the things are leaking in, but I hope you get the idea. So that's the things which are, which are on the left-hand side. The right-hand side is the complement of, sorry, the intersection of the complements. So if you take the complement of A, meaning you, you forget all about this, so that's, I mean, you have to imagine that's this part, the thing which I just shaded with red. And for the complement of B, you have to look at the other part, sorry, this part, right? And if you intersect, you will indeed find that, you know, diagrammatically at least, we can confirm this. But a picture is not a proof, so let's give a formal proof. Okay, so we start with, suppose x is an element on the left-hand side, what does that mean? It means precisely that x is not in A union B and x is in x. That's exactly what it means. Maybe I'll write the second one first. So it means x is in x, but x is not in A union B, which means x is in x and x is not in A, x is not in B. And here there is an and, of course. Comma just means and. But we can write this as follows. X is an X. X is not an A. And X is an X. X is not an B. Which means X is an A complement. And X is an B complement. Which is same as saying X is an A complement, intersection B complement. So this double implies that, and hence, an element lies in the left-hand side only, if and only if it lies in the right-hand side, and therefore the two things are equal. That's it. That's the proof of De Morgan's law. And now let us end this lecture with a very simple, not a very simple maybe, but a very interesting expression of geometric facts that we learn in high school. So the big blob here denotes the set of all the set of all uh, quadrilaterals quadrilaterals a quadrilateral is a geometric shape which has four sides this inside blob this denotes all trapeziums so a trapezium is a quadrilateral where two sides are parallel right so clearly every trapezium is a quadrilateral and hence uh, the diagram captures that. And there do exist quadrilaterals which are not trapeziums. Okay, this denotes pa all parallelograms. So every parallelog parallelogram is a trapezium because a parallelogram is a quadrilateral where all, both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. In a trapezium only one pair of opposite sides is assumed to be parallel. So every parallelogram is a trapezium. Okay, and now this denotes all rectangles. Clearly every rectangle is a parallelogram because a rectangle is, uh, well by definition a rectangle is just a quadrilateral, all, f all four of whose angles are 90 degrees, but it follows that it is a parallelogram. So this is all rectangles. And this, this blob, this blob over here denotes all rhombuses. which we discussed a few minutes back, and we also commented that the intersection of rhombuses with rectangles gives us squares. So inside, this intersection is all squares. So that's uh, one way to express some of the geometric facts that we learn in high school in the site theoretic language. Okay, so with that, I want to end this lecture. As usual, like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you next time.